The following video is sponsored by Crunchyroll. Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today with my review for Kingdoms of Amalur Real Reckoning. Ladies and gentlemen, this one's been served fresh out of the oven. It's hot, it's steamy, it's on a plate. It's like a beautiful slice of pizza. I'm sorry, I have not ate today. Okay, Maddie, focus. Today, we're talking about Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning, a game that we have meticulously covered on the channel for a number of months, and I'm a huge fan of the original game. So, if you're new here, you like reviews, you like RPGs, maybe do consider hitting that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. But, the chance with the remaster here was to clean up some of the nagging issues with the original release of Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning. Also, accommodating those of you who are new fans. So, did THQ Nordic do that? We'll be answering that in this review. But before that, we got to get into this amazing sponsor. I'm so hyped about this. It's not in here. Oh, I'm going to be late. I got to find it. I got to find it. I found it. There it is. Okay. I'm going to make it on time. All right, let's go. Hello, good sir. I'd like one entry into the anime club. Hold on there. I'm gonna need to see a certificate of authenticity. Oh, well certainly. I've got this certificate of authenticity right here. It is my sixth grade drawing of Kisame Hoshigaki. I am quite proud of it and I've loved Naruto since I was a wee lad. All right, you're good. This is it. Hey there, newcomer! Welcome to the Anime Club! So first things first, you've got to hear all about Crunchyroll Premium. I've been a member for seven years and that's because of the incredible suite of anime that is offered here. Let's start off with the first one, one of the newest ones, and that's The God of High School, okay? Amazing fight scenes, everyone's got a red little nose, bang and soundtrack. This show is so unique, it's only available on Crunchyroll. Then there's my personal favorite of all time, I know we only got one season, but it's The Promised Neverland. There is nothing quite like this show. It's so gripping and creepy and interesting and I cannot wait for the second season. Attack on Titan, no brainer, of course. This is one of the very best. This is my gateway into anime. Crunchyroll Premium offers a near unlimited selection and with premium, it's ad free at 1080p. It's available on all devices, whether it's PlayStation, Xbox, mobile devices, Roku, Apple TV, it's literally everywhere. Now, obviously this sounds juicy. So all you gotta do is head over to crunchyroll.com slash Mr. Maddie Place. That's crunchyroll.com slash Mr. Maddie Place. Sign up. 14 day free trial, give it a try. Let me know what anime you are watching that you've been looking into, that you're interested in. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. I don't sign up for a lot of subscription services, but seven years on Crunchyroll, no regrets. Give it a try. The story for Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning begins with the Well of Souls. As your character dies in combat and has their soul restored into their body, thus bringing them back to life, you are the first person to have this ever happen to them. Now people are using the Well of Souls in a pursuit of immortality. However, the Tuatha Dé Own have caught wind of this, and they are one of the major factions within the Kingdoms of Amalur universe. Led up by Gadflow, they are now invading, trying to wipe everyone out and pretty much secure total domination. One thing I noticed as I poked around with questions in the dialogue in Kingdoms of Amalur is just how fascinating and well-written the lore is for this universe. It's truly interesting to be a part of. For example, the Tuatha that I just mentioned are a radical splinter of the Fae who hate mortals, are immortal themselves, and when they die, their essence returns home to be reborn later. So obviously, with that breakdown of what kind of faction they are, you wonder why would they want something like the Well of Souls, and the story starts to unwind wind and explain a lot of that. Now, how does your character play into this? You are the Fate Weaver. So, of course, you're not bound to any fate. There is no predetermined destiny. And the Fate Weavers are a group of people who you guess that they can read people's futures and they knew about the Well of Souls and they knew how it would eventually succeed. They just didn't know exactly when. So, you're not bound to any particular fate. And this plays not only into the story, but also the gameplay systems, which I think inherently makes it a lot more interesting because it's such a well constructed game. Combat is going to be the superstar in this game between dodging, blocking, primary attacks, and secondary attacks where you can map different weapons to them. So you could use a long sword and a staff, or you could use something like daggers as well as a bow and arrow. There are charge attacks, 
combos, abilities that you can unlock through an upgrade tree, magic that you can use, and eight abilities in total that you can use compared to the four of the original game, which is a huge upgrade because while the abilities in this game are great, you were very limited in the original release of what you could use. Furthermore, there is the reckoning mode, which really beefs you up, allows you to take on a lot of enemies at once you do increased damage, it slows down time, and at the end, you just mash a button for an XP bonus and either stab an enemy to death or throw them on some type of ghostly spike. It's kind of brutal. It's really crazy. I didn't realize how M rated this game is in a lot of ways. It really does take advantage of it. Obviously, it doesn't go above and beyond what you've seen in M rated games, but I guess it's something I sort of forgot because it's art style doesn't really indicate to me that people are going to be getting decapitated. Blood's going to be flying everywhere, but that happens. And uh, yeah, it's good. I like it. The gameplay all ties to this destiny system where you set your fate. These are cards that round out your build, whether you want to go all in on magic, rogue, warrior, or mixing and matching any of them. So it begins with when you level up. You can spend points on a number of skills, whether it's blacksmithing, sage crafting. You could also invest in things like alchemy, lock picking, so on and so forth. However, it's when you start to put points into the might the sorcery or the finesse trees is when you start to see things really round out because these trees unlock different passive bonuses as well as combos and abilities that you can use for specific weapons and archetypes. Then when you get to this destiny system, you can choose a card which will, as I said earlier, round out your build giving you significant bonuses. For example, if you are a tier two of the sorcery tree, you'll actually unlock a very significant elemental damage bonus for your mage. So you could be a number of things, right? You could do a crossover between a warrior and a mage and be a battle mage, and you'll have specific bonuses for that in the destiny system. Or you could do something along the lines of being finesse crossed over with sorcery or might as well as finesse. Like there's so many ways to cross them over as you sink points into these trees. And the best part is you can be amazing at one thing or another thing, but you can't do it all in a single playthrough. So it rewards you to come back, try out different weapons, become proficient in them, try out different abilities, different bits of magic. So there is a sense of replayability here baked into this action gameplay system, and it's easily the star of the show. However, that's the base game, right? What about this being a remaster? How is Kingdoms of Amalur re-reckoning as a remaster? Well, as I'm sure you've already noticed, graphically speaking, um, how do I put this lightly? Uh, it's kind of the same looking if you're at least on PC, right? When you're on PS4, this is going to be great because you really didn't have a way to access the game on PS4. But when it comes to PC, it's pretty similar. You really notice it in the foliage, in the trees, a lot of the environments and some of the objects you can tell have been cleaned up, but even then it's not noticeably so. One of the more significant changes is the FOV, the sprint controls, and the HUD scaling as well as stash limits increasing. So pulling out the field of view really helps a lot with fixing some of the camera issues that plagued the original release. A lot of times your camera would just get hooked or be off-centered in the middle of combat or pull a mile out. This still does happen occasionally, but much, much less because of that FOV adjustment. Sprint controlling, instead of pressing A to sprint, you can now map it to save the left stick if you want. HUD scaling, as always, is nice, and having a bigger stash limit is nice, but also because your inventory space loads up. So let's say, right, you've got five inventory slots and you pick up a piece of paper. That's now one of your inventory slots taken up. Then you pick up a potion. That's now two. So it can add up real quickly. Having more of a stash really does help with allowing you to hoard your items, which we want to do in these RPGs. And because there weren't many improvements graphically and some of the gameplay still remains dated, I started to really pay closer attention to issues that plagued the game back in 2012, like the dated facial animations. They're just not good. And it's not something I expected to be fixed here, but when they couldn't fix anything else, that starts to become a bigger problem. But this game also needed drastic quality of life improvements on all fronts. For example, a photo mode, this game is so colorful, beautiful, 
it is ripe for a photo mode. What about a loot all system? This is one of those RPGs where you gotta run around, loot all the bodies. And after playing like Wasteland 3, I understand I might've been a little spoiled coming off an amazing RPG like that. But the fact that I can't loot one body and then it just collects all of them and I can choose from all of the bodies in the nearby radius, what I wanna bring into my character's inventory seems like such an obvious missed opportunity to make the game a little more convenient. Quest icons on the map are just circles. The one that you have selected is gonna be gold. However, that doesn't get rid of all the silver ones. So when you collect multiple quests in a zone, I don't know, I felt very overwhelmed almost immediately. And I mean, I play a ton of RPGs and I've played this game before. It just felt like a lot and it became very messy, especially when the game struggles to really direct you where to go through that mini map. I found that all of those icons there only served to hurt the game. And once again, this is something that could have been adjusted for this remaster. That's the idea of this is taking the old game, bringing it back, but also giving it some couple of bells and whistles so that it actually works better for modern gamers. And it doesn't stop there because there's even bugs. And I'm talking about pretty significant ones. For example, the finesse charge attack, which dashes between multiple enemies, sometimes flat out doesn't work. Just take a look at this clip here. They did add a very hard difficulty setting, which I personally appreciate because after playing the game over and over, I would like to master a build and then go for a very hard difficulty playthrough. I think that'd be really fun. Like I said, combat is the superstar here. It's all about the combat in Kingdoms of Amalur re-reckoning. So anything adding to that, making that better is what's gonna elevate this game more because the lore is great if you care enough to sit down, listen, ask questions, but anything that adds to that combat which they did help a little bit with the fov slider they did help a little bit with something along the lines of a very hard difficulty adding eight abilities instead of having just four map to your controller you can use eight like that is a game changer there those are significant quality of life improvements so it does show that they could go in there and fix these type of things but however the main issue here is that the money they're asking for at least on pc right this isn't a free upgrade situation if you want re-reckoning you have to pay again and i know it's a little bit different with console users right because some of you may not have access to these games readily, so it's worth your time and money. And it's an amazing RPG that you should spend your money on if you have the means to do so, because it is fantastic. They're adding an expansion, so the lore in turn is more interesting, because you know there's a future here. I'm glad they're investing in Kingdoms of Amalur. However, if you're on the PC, I cannot justify you spending your money on this. If you've never played the game before, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer, but there's just so many different ways to approach the purchasing decision of this game that it's ultimately incredibly hard to make a definitive call. It depends on your situation. Like I said, console users, maybe you've never played the game before or you don't have access to the game readily. This is a good game to pick up. But when it comes to people who have it on PC already and you're looking to just go back to it with a couple of new additions to the game, this is not remotely worth your cash. And I found that sorely disappointing. And even as someone who would want it for their console, I was disappointed in some of the bugs that would happen in combat. I was disappointed in the lack of quality of life improvements. I felt like they just said, okay, the, we've done enough because we brought back this long dead franchise. And don't get me wrong, that's not lost on me. The fact that this game is coming out is insane. It is actually insane, right? This is under the thumb of a dead company, under the thumb of EA, and somehow THQ Nordic took it out and made it theirs and remastered the game and re-released it. That on its own right is incredible, which is why I say people should support this game if they like it. But of course, your money is what matters here. And there's a lot of question marks. There's a lot of question marks where you could wait for a sale or I don't know, just pass up on it entirely if you already own the game and you have a way of playing it. Because even those changes like the FOV slider, like HUD scaling, a very hard mode, those don't to me change things so drastically. I go, thank God they did that. I think the best one they've added here is the eight abilities. And who knows, maybe they'll continue to tinker with this remaster and add features over time. But as it stands now, 
I personally wasn't in love with what they did with the remaster. I mean, it's cool, for example, that they brought things back like Commander Shepard's armor. This was one of the pre-order bonuses for the game. There's a special deliveries chest that you can pop open and you can go through everything. And seeing Commander Shepard's armor in there, like I remember 2012, I played the demo. I loved this game. I was like, oh my God, I need to buy this. I bought it and running around as a might build with Commander Shepard's armor was such a cool moment because as I said, this game was published by EA. So there was also actually a bit of Dragon Age armor in this game that I think they did take out, but still seeing Commander Shepard's armor was awesome. It was awesome to see that retained. It does show the team at THQ Nordic understands what they're working with, the value of certain things, like little things like that in this game. And that I appreciate, which is why I'm very much looking forward to the expansion. I'll continue to cover this game. I'll continue to shout from the mountains how amazing of an RPG this game is. But as a remaster, so much more could have been done and it's not worthy of an incredible game like Kingdoms of Amalur. When it comes to technical aspects, it runs fine, at least on PC. I didn't have any stutters or anything. It doesn't crash. So it, it's a solid game, right? It's just that the things that could have made it better are not present at all. And they just cleaned it up ever so slightly and re-released it. And if you don't believe me and you think it's just me, look at some of like comments on the trailers. People think it looks identical to the original, but because the trailers are so fast moving, I think a lot of folks are going, oh, maybe it's just because of the trailer. And no, no, it, it looks pretty close to the original in a lot of ways, um, even in the final product when you're just playing it moment to moment. So that's my review, ladies and gentlemen, for Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning. Overall, if you've never played the game, definitely pick it up. It's awesome. But if you have played it before and maybe money's tight, um, I think you're okay waiting for a sale on this one for the time being. So that's just my thoughts. I wanted to share them with you guys and I'm looking forward to reading what you have to say in the comments down below. So let me know what you guys are thinking. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below. Big thank you to all of the patrons who continue to support all the content we do here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.